Well, this changes things. I'm wirelessly connected to my MetaQuest 3. I'm using virtual desktop, fantastic visuals, great clarity, great performance on high settings. And all this from a $500 VR headset. It's because of an upcoming update to Virtual Desktop, which you can get your hands on right now. Virtual Desktop, of course, is a streaming app, brings improved PC VR performance to virtual reality headsets designed principally as standalone. If you're not familiar with Virtual Desktop or my recommended settings, then check out my previous video link in the notes below. So what's this all about? Well, Virtual Desktop uses Steam VR as its OpenXR runtime. And Steam VR, well, it carries a lot of baggage with it and is relatively resource hungry. Virtual Desktop XR strips away any excess baggage, freeing up your resources and bringing a better performance to your VR experience. This is the SimHanger channel. My name's Mark. Thank you very much for watching and let's get started. In this video, I'll show you how to get your hands on the beta version right now if you want to for the MetaQuest series of VR headsets as well as the Pico 4. I'll also show you how to switch to the new runtime and the new way of getting into your sim. The formal release of this update is due in a couple of days. So if you don't want to manually update, that's good too. The updated version of Virtual Desktop should be out soon. We'll start with the Quest 3 and at the end I'll show you how to do it for the Pico 4. Working in conjunction with the developers of Virtual Desktop, Matthew, the same developer that brought us the OpenXR Toolkit, is once again behind the introduction of Virtual Desktop XR for Virtual Desktop. And once again, many thanks Matt for your contribution to the simming world. Link to this GitHub page in the notes below. This update will be built into the next release of Virtual Desktop. There is a standalone version available via the OpenXR Discord, as highlighted in my MetaQuest 3 review video, but that's a separate product and not available until the end of November. If you did get your hands on it, I recommend you uninstall before following the process I'll outline now. To manually upgrade your Quest 3, make sure you're logged into your Meta account and go to the store page of Virtual Desktop. I recommend you do it via your PC or your mobile. Once on the Virtual Desktop store page, scroll down to Version and Release Notes. Your current version will be 1.29.0. From the drop-down menu, select 1.29.3. Once you've done that, you can exit the page, go back into your headset, and this will trigger Virtual Desktop to update automatically in your Quest device. Back to our GitHub page, you'll also be required to download the Beta Desktop Streamer for compatibility. Just click on the link and it will download. Once downloaded to your PC or mobile, I recommend you uninstall your previous streamer and then go ahead and install. It's a small program and the job's done quickly. Now let's take a look at the new desktop streamer on your PC. Note it should read version 1.29.3 and under the Options tab, everything looks much the same except you now have an OpenXR runtime option. You can now set it up to suit your preference as highlighted in my previous video. I'm on the Quest 3 so I'm going to choose AV1 10-bit and I don't want to use Steam VR so under the OpenXR runtime I'm going to choose Virtual Desktop XR. That's it, we're done. As an aside you can always check that it is valid and running after you've used it at least once by checking your OpenXR log file. How to find it etc is on the GitHub page. Back in the headset now, and after Virtual Desktop has uploaded, we can run the application. I'm now in one of the Virtual Desktop virtual environments. For Microsoft Flight Simulator or something similar, it's best to choose a desktop type option. Makes it quite easy to set up your flight before getting into VR. You can then check your settings and streaming settings, again as covered in my previous video. But what we're not going to do is click on the Launch Steam VR, as we would normally. I close the menu, I'm looking at my desktop, select Microsoft Flight Simulator directly from the virtual desktop, and the application starts. It's up to you of course, but I prefer to stay in the big screen mode and go ahead and set up my flight, and get myself on the runway. Then once I'm on the runway, remember I'm still in big screen mode, 
Select the appropriate toggle switch or button and switch yourself into VR mode. And we're now in VR. As mentioned in my previous video, I have the performance overlay showing. And in this case, I also have the OpenXR toolkit activated. The frames per second is shown and the latency that's applicable to you is under game. 20 or less is very good. Under 30 for a flight sim is good. Over 30 and you're opening yourself up to stutters and pauses. You can see the codec I'm using is the AV1 10-bit, but the runtime is reporting Oculus. And we would have expected Virtual Desktop XR. Don't worry about it, it's just an anomaly of the beta and should be fixed by the time it is formally released. I queried this directly with Matt, the developer, and he confirmed it's purely a cosmetic issue at the moment. You'll also note I've got Motion Reprojection or SSW disabled, as at the time of making this video, SSW is not supported, but that's likely to change. It's worth mentioning at this point to run the AV1 codec, and to run these headsets wirelessly, you need a fairly beefy PC and GPU. If you're struggling for performance, choose a codec like HEVC. This is not a setup guide, but here's a quick look at my settings in OpenXR Toolkit. I'm using CAS upscaling, sharpening at 70% with turbo mode on. And I stand to be corrected, but I think that these settings in OpenXR Toolkit also override settings in the debug tool. I'm using a resolution per eye as indicated there, 3300 by 3455. Bearing in mind my CPU is a 10900K. If you've got a 13th or 14th gen CPU, you could probably turn this up even further. I note on the forums that a lot of people are getting a crash to desktop when they go into VR, when using Virtual Desktop XR. If you're not having that problem, ignore this section. But if you are, this could be a fix for you. Open up your Steam settings. You don't have to be in VR. Go to Settings and then Open XR tab. Here once again I'm getting confirmation I'm using Virtual Desktop XR. And select the Manage Open XR API Layers tab. And then here make sure Compatibility Layer for Oculus XR plugin is switched off. It's conflicting with the Virtual Desktop XR. But all of this is somewhat pointless without some results. And of course the fact that I've got an RTX 4090 has a bearing on what we see. Using exactly the same settings with the exception of the codec, as I found under Steam the HEVC codec seemed to work best for my system. Yours of course may vary. I did gain a pickup in performance but it wasn't massive. In terms of FPS it would be something between 3 to 5. In a complex aircraft I'm using the Kodiak 100, fairly resource hungry and somewhat typical of using an airliner and flying low and fast over photogrammetry London. SteamVR gave me an average of about 39 FPS and Virtual Desktop XR an average of about 43. If you're wondering about SteamVR with the AV1 codec, I dropped about a further two frames. But it wasn't the improvement in the frames per second that was most noticeable. What struck me was how smooth it is. The recording that you're looking at was recorded directly in the headset, so reasonably representative of what I'm seeing. I'm in TAA mode with level of detail at 130. And of course using the AV1 codec I had such great clarity both in and outside the cockpit. It's not Pimax quality, but you know for a 500 US dollar headset, well it beats many others. And here's the good news in my opinion. Whilst obviously I haven't tested, I would fully expect if you've got a 4080, 4070, perhaps a 3090 or 3080, I would expect you to experience a much bigger FPS uplift, allowing you to adjust your resolution and settings accordingly. The introduction in Virtual Desktop of Virtual Desktop XR is not really aimed at 4090 owners, but it opens up the prospect of wireless streaming VR to those with lesser systems. And bear in mind them on a fairly old CPU at 10900K. Whilst this may not be a solution for everybody, it's certainly a step in exactly the right direction. You may be thinking, well, 40 odd FPS is not great. Well, bear in mind I've tweaked my Microsoft Flight Simulator settings up. 
It's a combination of predominantly high and ultra to achieve that FPS, to get the best performance with the best visuals. And bear in mind, flying low over London's a fairly tough test. Yes, I can get 60 odd FPS if I want to, flying a default aircraft in a low density scenery setting. But as I've said many times on this channel, I want one setting, set and forget. And I think I'm almost there. Let's now turn our attention to the Pico 4. It's a slightly different process to get the beta running on this headset, but nonetheless a fairly simple process. Let's get into it. We're back to Matt's GitHub page. Once again, links in the notes below, and it includes details and instructions for the Pico 4. You need to update the PC-based desktop streamer, following exactly the process outlined earlier in this video. And there is a link to download an APK file, which is an Android package kit, because the Pico runs on an Android-based system. Select the link, and you'll be taken to the GitHub page. And for the Pico 4, you're looking for virtualdesktop.android.pico.apk. Select that file and download it to your PC. And place it somewhere so you know where it is. We're going to be needing it again very shortly. Once you've done that, using the USB-C to USB-C cable supplied with the Pico 4, connect the Pico 4 to your computer directly. Remaining on your PC, select your Pico 4 and then internal storage and copy and paste the downloaded file to any location. I recommend the folder named Downloads. Once you've copied it there, disconnect from the PC we're just about ready to update. We're now in VR in the Pico Home and from the menu bar we're going to select File Manager. Select that and you're presented with all the different folders available on the Pico 4. We placed our file in the Downloads folder so find that and open it. There's our file. In the bottom right hand corner of the icon you'll see three dots. Select that then select Open and you'll be given the option to install an update to an existing application, which is exactly what we want to do. Select Install, and the Install and Update starts only takes a second or two, and we're done. I then recommend that you exit, start the desktop streamer first, re-enter the Pico 4, and we can check that the update's been successful. Via our applications, we can choose Virtual Desktop, and let's open that. We can check if it's successful by opening the virtual desktop menu and on the bottom left we should see version 1.29.3 Success! We can now go and configure where necessary Job done! With the Pico 4 I used uh, HEVC-10 uh, bit I found I got a very good image and very similar performance It was a great experience well, I hope you found this video both interesting, informative and helpful. If you did, then it's achieved its objective. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to give a thumbs up. It does help the channel and is always appreciated. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you all again very soon. And ciao for now.